for Gospel Church Ministry. We welcome you again to another remote Sunday program. Our service will be bilingual and in English, but before we start, I would like to greet our Samoan viewers in our native tongue. Itula, ye vi ia lava de li, vi ia yesu, ye fai ne pokalama, fa manyama. Ilo loto e mese lo manana. So, before we get to the word of God, or before we share the word of God, we'd like to hand it over to our praise and worship team um, to lead us in a song of worship. May you be blessed. <laughs> And our subject for or our topic for today is um, we are made for God's glory. Praise the Lord. So verse 7, Isaiah chapter 43. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. 
in Samoa, o i lato uma ua i ngoa i lo i ngoa, na o faia ia i a mi i a ia, na o ngau sia ma o faia lava i lato, e mai na ngau sia e ia, ma faia lava e ia i tato, tangata o le tua, amen. So God's people who are called by his name were created for his glory. Wow. God created you, God created me for his glory. Amen. In the same chapter, Isaiah 43, I'm going to read verse 21 and verse 22. It says, This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Amen. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. So it says that God even formed us for himself and that we should show forth the praises of God. Wow, what a purpose for us, huh? for his glory, for God's glory, and for God's praise. That's why we exist. This life is temporary. This world that we live in, it's not going to last forever. One day, you know, God's going to call us home. So remember that. You were made, you were specifically it's a privilege. It should be an honor for us. We were called by God for His glory. Praise the Lord. We were made by God to show forth His praises. You were chosen by God. But verse 22 says, But you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. In Psalm 1, it says, Praise the Lord. You know, Israel, there was no other nation like Israel. There was no other people like the Jewish people. God out of all the multitudes of people, he picked these and made them his people, chose them. I mean, what a privilege, what an honor, the God of the universe. You know, this universe is really big, but he's the God of the universe. He's the maker of heaven and earth. And he chose a specific people, the Jewish people, to show forth his praises for his own glory, to show forth his praises. In other words, these were the people of God were God's presence from heaven can be manifested on the earth. Did you know that? Specific people. But it says that they did not want to call on him. It says, you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. Weary. Wow. They were weary of calling God. And sometimes that's like us. You know, we, we as a people, as Christians, we get busy with our daily work. Some of us work, you know, several jobs. And we get so tied up in this life that we become weary and calling on God. But I just want us to refocus that you were made, you were selected, you were chosen by God to be His people for His glory and to show forth His praise. The Spirit of God in me would like to encourage you and the Spirit of God within me would like to remind you of your status, you're different from everyone else, okay? So, you know, so what a, what a big mistake that Israel made. Not only they were God's selected people, but they did not want to call on him, and they were weary of calling. In other words, it was being like, it, it was bothering them to call God, ah, you know? Just going through the motion, their heart wasn't in it. But let me tell you, Ephesians 1 verse 3, let me tell you, as Christians, because this also applies to us as Christians, we are the chosen people of God. Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 5, it says, he, um, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You know, it, it, verse 3 is praising God the Father because He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him. 
He chose us in him, in Christ. He chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world. Before this world was even formed, he knew that you would select his son, Jesus Christ. He selected you before the foundation of his world. What a privilege. What an honor. And it says, verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Do you know that? He adopted you and me to himself in Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ. You, you get what I'm saying here? What a privilege, what an honor. He adopted you to himself in Christ, by Christ Jesus. And verse 3 says, he blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In other words, there's no blessing of heaven that God is holding back from his children. Amen? That should excite us. God doesn't hold back no blessings of heaven. All of heaven's blessing is open to you. To me, he chose us. He adopted us to himself as his children. You, as a Christian, are a child of God. I am a child of God through Christ. Praise the Lord. And he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. No more holding back of the heavenly blessings. All the blessings of heaven are open to you, open to me, because we're in Christ. Amen? You see that? What an honor. What a, and he chose us before the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord. He chose us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. So not only did he chose us, he chose you and me to be holy and without blame because we're in Christ. In God's eyes, because we're in Christ, we're without blame. As long as we are in Christ, we are without blame. We are holy. So remain in Christ. Okay? Don't be weary. Don't let this world make you weary. You just remain in Christ. Remember God's love towards us, that he chose us. Okay? And then verse 5. I want you to hear this. Verse 5. Having predestinated, uh, predestinated us unto the adoption of children, by Jesus Christ to himself, okay? He adopted us by Jesus Christ to himself. And listen to this, according to the good pleasure of his will. Did you hear that? According to the good pleasure. It's pleasure to God, amen? It's a pleasure to him to adopt us as children by Jesus Christ to himself. It's his pleasure to choose you. That was his out of the good pleasure of his will. You know what, you see that? The good pleasure of his will. He willed it to choose you, to choose me, to adopt us to himself as his children, according to his good pleasure. Praise the Lord. God, it pleases, it, it, it's pleasure, it's pleasure to God that he can adopt us to himself as his children by Jesus Christ. Amen. It makes him joyful, makes him happy. It's a pleasure for him. Praise the Lord. Okay? So remember that. That's your status. The world don't care about us. You know that? If you fall, the world just, or if you die, we we'll put you in the ground. They're going to forget about you, but God don't. You are special to God. Okay? Don't ever forget your status as a child of God. Praise the Lord. And I'm reminding you today, I pray that this program will bless your heart. This program will remind you, okay, of, 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 that, of God's pleasure that he chose you, that he adopted you as children to himself. In Ephesians 2, verse 19, it says, Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Let me repeat that. You are no more strangers and foreigners. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. Us as children of God, right? Ephesians 2, verse 19. But fellow citizens with the saints, we're fellow citizens with the saints in heaven, and of the household of God. In Samoan, it says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
ole atua o e ma o ito tonu ole a inga ole atua ta tonu o ito ole liu ole a inga ole atua praise the Lord and it says that we are fellow citizens with the saints praise the Lord and I want you to get this and of the household of God wow did you know you as a Christian are of the household of God let me give you a good example every time I see my granddaughter I only have one grandkid right now. I hope for more. Dora and Gideon. Anyways, I have one granddaughter, one grandchild. It's my granddaughter. And every time she comes to our house, when she comes, oh, it's a joy for me to see my granddaughter. And when she walks in the house, she just walks in the house, goes into my, our bedroom, like she owns the place. Of course she does. She's of my household. And she goes, Papa, can I have this, Papa, you know? Oh man, I, I'm doing everything that she wants, you know, because it's out of my good pleasure. It's my good pleasure to please my granddaughter, you know. It's so joyful for me to spend time with her. And it's just like us. You are of the household of God. Amen. You are the, of the household of God. Remember that. And he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ all the blessings of heaven he's blessed you with but you have to know you have to live and walk by faith praise the lord and you always have to remain in christ okay you always got to read the word of god to remind you so that the word will burn within your heart so that word will stir up your heart because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god not by hearing it once hearing is a process you hear it over and you hear it every time Okay, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ or the word of God. So you always got to be hearing. Hearing means you're always doing it. It's an action, right? You're always hearing the word, hearing the word. Read the word to yourself. Build up your faith. But remember that you are of the household of God. What a privilege. What an honor that you and me as Christians, we are of God's household. And just like the example I showed you with my granddaughter, as soon as my, uh, my wife brings her home and she walks in through that front door, hi, Papa, and she just goes to the fridge. She can do whatever she wants in my house. It's her house too. It's her grandpa's house. Amen. And just like my kids, when they come into the house, it's their house because they are of my household. So they have all the rights and privilege of my household. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have all the rights and privilege because you are of God's household. Amen? Praise the Lord. And Ephesians 2, and you know, and this is the reason. Here's the reason why. I know I brought this up before, but I always emphasize this. Ephesians 2, verse 4. It says, Because God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. In Samos, it says, Ona Praise the Lord. He is so rich. It says, but God. See, if you read verse Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3, it's really bad. It talks about us being the children of disobedience. Children, you know, we were under wrath. But then something happened. God happened. But God, verse 4, Ephesians 2. But God, see, God intervened on you and my behalf. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. He loved us. He loved you. Great mercy. He loved you. You hear me? God loves you. If you're listening to me, listen. God, look in my eyes. God loves you. Don't forget that. As a child of God, God loves you. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see that? So he not only quickened us together, right? with Christ but he also raised us up together with Christ and he made us to sit together with him 
in heavenly places. He took our lowly position, raised us up together with Christ, and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. In other words, your position as a child of God, my position as a child of God, is in heavenly places together with Christ. He elevated your position. Okay, The world might not care about you. Your boss might not care about you. You know, your friends or your worldly friends might make fun of you because, you know, being a Christian, don't worry. God, through Jesus Christ, has elevated us positionally. That's your, in God's eyes, in, God, in God's heart, you and myself as God's children, we're positioned together with Christ in heavenly places. That is your lot as a Christian. That's a blessing. It's an honor. It's a privilege. That's why I remind us we were made for His glory. We were made to show forth His praises. Okay? You're special, man. You're special, my brother, my sister. You are special in the eyes of God. And don't you ever forget that. He made you for His glory and He made you to show forth His praises. He made us as his choice, he adopted us to himself by Jesus Christ. Call us for his glory. He made us for his glory. And then he also made us to show forth his praises. Praise the Lord. May God richly bless you. And I pray that his word stir something up in your heart today. And may his word bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. And we love you. I would like to end our service today with a prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father God, for your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for your great love wherewith you loved us. Anyone right now of our viewers that is in need, we pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you will deliver them by your mighty hand. Those that are sick, that you will heal them, Father God, as you said in your word, by his stripes, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. And anyone who is in need, Father God, financially, we thank you. You will meet all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We pray for your blessing upon blessing on all those that are viewing our program today, Father God. We thank you again for your mercy. For your grace, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We hope you enjoy our program today, and may God bless you in Jesus' name.